Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh, everyone. This is Brother Mushtaq with Happy Strong Family, and I am joined today with Brother Dr. Zehan Rashid. Dr. Zehan. Dr. Khair, Mushtaq. Always a pleasure to be with you in, in the studios. Well, today we have a very special focus. Just give us 10 minutes of your time. Only 10 minutes, and inshallah, in 10 minutes, we will give you 10 power tips about Ramadan. Dr. Zehan, over to you. Uh, tip number one, which I think is very well known, is really a strategy for losing excess weight. I think this is something that's most easily identified simply because you cut down caloric intake and you also reduce the amount of fluid that you're drinking. So the body changes over to a different mode of using energy because stored glycogen, stored glucose lasts about 12 hours for most people. So you start to lose weight if you consistently cut down the amount of calories over a period of 29 or 30 days. So I think this is something most people probably identify very easily. Okay. Tip number two, which perhaps many people don't realize, is the actual improvement in hunger for healthy things. So uh, remembering that our body is constantly being bombarded with toxic, processed, and sometimes additives in the foods, hmm. which seriously affect our ability to distinguish the good from the not good. And because taste has become such a big thing for people versus nutrition, then really this deprivation allows the body to reset itself and find its correct end point, as it were. It knows where to start and where to finish. So you actually have improved hunger for healthy things. This may sound surprising, yes. but I would say try it at home. Okay. Reduce the junk foods in your life and start focusing on the healthier options. And yes, it will take time, but remember Ramadan is 29 or 30 days long for a reason, because you establish good habits in that time. Very good, number three. A third tip is something that may sound surprising, but again, I think for those who have a slightly scientific background, they will understand that our brain needs to grow. And I really mean the neurons, the functioning components of the brain have to be constantly kept, if you like, re-established. They are not constantly, continuously living for, you know, 80, 70 years that we live. Mm. They have to regrow, they have to reproduce, they have to, if you like, reconnect even. Okay. So the brain has this wonderful factor, and I'll try and say it very song, uh, slowly, the brain-derived neurotropic factor, which is like a growth hormone. It's okay. literally like that topsoil that you put on your garden. Right. to make your grass grow greener or your plants to grow sweeter. Or nourishment. Your, it's literally nourishment. And that is directly uh, secreted in response to, to, to uh, food deprivation. Huh. So therefore, your brain will function better when you fast. Again, something counterintuitive. Amazing. Yeah. Point number four, please. So point number four is, especially this is for our sisters, it actually clears the skin and prevents acne which a lot of youngsters and some not so youngsters suffer from. Hmm. Remembering that the skin is our biggest organ and therefore it excretes almost every toxic material that we put on our body. So one of the reasons why this will reduce in fasting during uh, the month of Ramadan is that the amount of toxic materials being put into the body is reduced. So this is an indirect but a very significant effect of fasting also that you will reduce the not just skin acne, pretty much every skin condition will improve. So if, so if you suffer from dry skin, for example, mm. or if you suffer from, you know, just irritated skin, you will find that all of these things start to reduce, inshallah, in the month of Ramadan. Amazing, amazing. Number five. A fifth tip is increasing self-enlightenment. You know how you feel a glow. People yeah. think, oh, it's because the guy's hungry and just can't be, you know, made any happier, except he forcefully smiles. Actually, that's not the case. The reason self-enlightenment comes in is because the digestive system is the biggest organ after the skin. Mm. So it's using a lot of energy. Digestion itself, particularly people who are fond of eating what I call heavily tainted foods, foods that have been added with a lot of things. They're not simple, organic, wholesome foods anymore. An example would be a cooked biryani. You're really allowing your liver to take a toll for at least three to four hours to digest it all. Mm. Because if you ate a couple of fresh apples, you may not feel the same taste, but you will actually give your digestive system a huge amount of service. So you will actually increase self-enlightenment by eating right foods less. 
Ah, okay, continue, please. Number six. Number six would be something like speeding up metabolism. Our body has developed a certain metabolic speed, depending on what we do with it. It's a bit like a car. If you rev it often, if you speed it often, its engine will run out quickly of steam. Mm. You will find that it's not able to respond after. It will certainly do well for a while, but we all need to think carefully about what distance we want to cover. So I think it's when it comes to fasting, slow marathon runner is always better than the sprinter. So think of metabolism as something that actually improves by fasting. And what that indirectly will mean is your digestion, your mood, your energy levels, your ability to sleep, your ability to control your temper, if you have one, all of these you will find will benefit from it. So it really is a win-win a situation. Awesome. Awesome. So it's really that subtractive approach that is actually additive to Very your much life. So. Very much so number so. seven, please do tell. Now seven, uh, just for the community, we all know diabetes is increasing mm. in incidence all across the board. Sadly, it's now appearing in younger and younger people. Mm. And that is because of a hormone that's called insulin that simply exhausts itself because of the complicated and increased amount of foods that most people are eating. Ramadan is an excellent time to reset the insulin meter. Okay. You can actually start to make the body more sensitive to insulin so that it starts to function in a manner that's more conducive to health. And because we are short on time, I won't go into the detail, but insulin really is the hormone you want to watch out. Of all the hormones in the body, this is the one you want to watch out mm. because this will predict even longevity. It will actually help you live longer okay. if you can control your insulin. That directly is related to the food that you're eating. So insulin sensitivity improving is actually a good parameter. Okay, good to know. Good to know. Dr. Zahan, number seven. Number seven is indirectly linked to what I just said, improving longevity, which means if you want to live longer, and if you want to live healthier, and if you want to live happier, eat less. It might sound counterproductive because many people connected their happiness to food. Yes. And I would say that's the wrong criteria. There is something else that should be used as a focus for happiness. Happiness and pleasure should not be mixed up. Pleasure is temporary, happiness is long-term. Right. You and me want pleasure, yes. We don't mean to imply that pleasure is not a good thing. But I'm saying to focus on pleasure is the purpose of being a person that is enjoying their life. That's a short-term strategy. So improving longevity with fasting is now a well-recognized scientific fact. Our Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, so in a famous hadith said, enough is for the son of Adam to eat a few morsels of food. And he himself, sallallahu alayhi wa if you look at his lifestyle, used to eat less. So eat less to live longer is the point that I would make on this particular one. Okay, okay, we're almost at the last mile stretch. So number eight. Number nine. It is number nine. Number nine, nine. I'm I might sorry. Have got mixed up. Losing it's track okay. here. It's okay. So this is something for people who are binge eaters hmm. because unfortunately there is a tendency amongst our humans in general, not just the community, that we eat more when we're stressed out. We eat more when we have some problem that is unsolvable in our minds. Mm -hmm. And there may be other reasons too. It just might be uh, that we are having a new job or we have moved places or there's something that's happened in our life and the focus we need to change to food. I'm saying fasting will actually help you stop binge eating because you recognize controlling myself in one aspect of my life actually helps me control pretty much all other aspects of my life. Right. And one of the reasons a lot of relationships go bad is because people lose control of themselves, mm. particularly the way we talk, the way we, we behave with our close and dear ones. So fasting is an excellent opportunity to really also adjust that, uh, uh, that particular aspect of my life, which okay. is improving eating by stopping binge eating. Right, right. Last power tip then. Last and not the least, and I think it's one of the most important in this day and age where longevity and immunity has become very important. Uh, our audience would, I'm sure, be aware of the very important effect on the immune system that fasting does, which means immunity is our ability to resist disease. Even though we have vaccines, even though we have masks, even though we have physical distancing, the fact is we ultimately need to develop our own internal strength with our own immune system, which is the th it's literally the body's army. It's literally the body's police force. It's the body's fire brigade. It's everything harmful that needs to be put out. That's what immune system does. So to improve immunity, start fasting. And I would say don't even end it with Ramadan. 
Think of 13th, 14th, 15th of each lunar month. Yes. Think of Monday, Thursdays as an option. Think of the six fasts that are coming up in Shabbal, et cetera, et cetera. I hope these tips are helpful, inshallah. Definitely, definitely. Dr. Zehan, thank you so very much for these 10 power tips in 10 minutes. This has been a great segment brought to you by the Happy Strong Family team. So we're signing off for now, and we'll keep it short and simple and sweet. Thank you very much, and enjoy the rest of your Ramadan. Zakala Khash. <laughs>